Hey, what's going on? Periscope, YouTube, YouTube Live. How you guys doing tonight? I gotta tell you, it has been, technology has been a challenge. Technology has been a challenge tonight. That is for sure. Thank you guys for waiting and tuning in. I gotta tell you, I'm gonna, I gotta share this story with you. It's actually kind of funny. How you doing tonight? For real. Okay, so here's how here's how it started. I'm gonna introduce myself and go into all of that. Um, I rush over to uh, sit down to to basically preempt the uh, the broadcast, and I fall out of my seat. You guys, now don't laugh at me, but I I literally fall out of my seat, and as I'm falling, so is everything else. Literally, screens are falling on the floor. Um, oh, it was, it was a total disaster. So I had to hurry up and restart things, plug things in, see what broke. And then I couldn't log on. O M G to the third power. You guys, I could not log on. And you know, what's funny. Not only could I not log on, it was, well, if you're not familiar with Periscope producer on the, the computer side, you can actually log on to Periscope producer without using your phone. So you can do it right through the browser. And it was asking me for my password, and I've got these layers of security on here, so I'm trying to figure out all this stuff. Oh, anyway, um, yeah, I was, I was definitely uh, falling, and I can't get up. Anyway, welcome to the Kilo Bravo Delta Zone. My name is Keith B. Dixon. Forgive me for my tardiness. It's official. You are here. And tonight, we're going to talk about some fundamentals. I'm going to go over some very fundamentals. I'm actually going to take you through some slides, and I'm going to do a couple of announcements and then we're going to dive right into this let me see names and locations if you see me looking to either side i'm just looking at the screen let me see names and locations let me see who if you're new definitely uh throw some emojis up wave but names and cities so i can see where you're coming from let's do this calvin from fort worth captain amber steve what's going on michelle how you doing david what's up don kurt patrick the og don lafathia congratulations um, on joining PPA. Rob, what's up? Deb from Detroit. Yes, Barry King, OG Barry King. There he is, Jerry Kelly. My man, Mr. Kelly, what's up? Yes, Stephanie from Florida. Michelle, yes. Commander Mike all day. Marilyn from Missouri. Iris, Iris, you're doing a really good job with your images. I could definitely see a progression there. So there's our Exposure 101 account, the 18th through the 21st. You guys, we got a super lineup for you. It is going to be insane. We have um, initially, now look, don't tell anybody I told you this. We really have space for like 280 people. And uh, I just checked yesterday, it's something like 360. You guys, a lot of people are going to be there. Now, um, we have auditorium day where we're just basically doing on stage stuff. And then, the I mean, we can accommodate as many as we can. If you're from Detroit, you just drive down to the photo walks. If you're local... Uh, or if you're from out of town, you just hop on the bus. We got you covered. There's going to be a lot of people there. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I hope you guys are there. 18th through the 21st in Detroit. Schoolcraft College, uh, which is in Livonia. And then uh, we'll be heading into downtown Detroit. Oh, it's, a, it's an amazing time, you guys. Yes, confirmed. Absolutely. So um, a lot, all of those people. So we started out with 640. That happens, right? We expect that number to be super high. Once we narrow it down, and we did a lot of vetting and calling, and I know people were frustrated, but it's free. How could you be frustrated? Right? You get some free education, make a phone call. Let's go. So a lot of people called back and confirmed. That's what I'm talking about. So we are confirmed, solid. And, and you guys, um, we're still adding some people for photo walks and things like that. The photo bays are going to be extraordinary. So from what I understand, I'm teaching a, light a basic lighting class. And uh, my basic lighting class, I'm going to take you from, from zero to 1,000. I'm going to teach you how to shoot uh, a portrait with uh, two lights. Or, I don't know, I always say two lights. I'm going to show you with one, one artificial light and a reflector. I'm going to show you how to make a great portrait. All right, there it is. So let's dive into, uh, you guys know, this weekend, actually, I made a mistake on the date. But this weekend is the actual 90 PT, and it's not too late to sign up. This red program is going to go away. Um, it won't be offered anymore, and it will only be the $290 program, which is a yearly subscription. 
Um, it's this Saturday. I made a mistake and put in the wrong Saturday, but it's actually this Saturday. We're doing the 90 PT and uh, starts at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And um, if you're already in the red, if you're already on the red train, uh, don't worry about it. You're, you're safe for this year. Uh, if you're not on the red train after this month, you, you got to catch the blue train. We got to cutting back on service. Let's go. So there it is. All right, let's talk about something really important tonight. Um, yeah, so, so Van, you can just watch the, uh, yeah, you can listen or watch the replay. I think, Van, you're on the blue team, so um, you got all access, I believe. I'm not sure, but anyway, here it is. News and technology section. Let's talk about what's going on here. And, you know, I, I ran across a real interesting article, you guys. Um, as you know, I have a, a daily a news daily that I do and um, I curate this actually every night I go in and I look for stories and plug them in and uh, this is a great service that the name of the daily my digital daily for photography is called F stop it now and um, you know I go through and I read these articles if it's really interesting I'll actually you know just really dig in here's another one I thought was I thought this article was really interesting and it's called are you shadow banned on Instagram? Thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, you guys, I'm, uh, I'm, not, I'm not looking at the screen, so I'm not able to see your comments, but I'll definitely pause so that you can ask questions or make comments for sure. Are you shadow banned on Instagram? And this is on my, um, you can see this, you can get to this either going through PETA Pixel, but if you have the F Stop It Now daily, which collects the information for you, and then you can pick it out, that's the sole purpose of it. Um, the article basically basically talks about how they're um, hiding a lot of photos that people are posting with keywords. So if you have a lot of key, I, I, I'm interpreting this, and if you have certain keywords in your posting on Instagram, people won't see those. You'll see them. You'll see it posted, but no one will see it. And I think what's happening here, I'm going to interpret where I think this is going. I think what's happening here is companies they're providing pre free platforms and providing bandwidth and uploads and all of the stuff that costs money and you know what they're limiting access and that was a prediction i made last year they're limiting the access and i would dig in here and really read this i would read this and it's also they te quasi tested it but it just talks about um no one knows and i'm going to read a quote out of here no one knows how the internal algorithm works other than Instagram. The developers say there is no trick to avoiding the ban or cheating this test. So simply, all they're doing is limiting because why would I allow you to advertise your business on my platform and not benefit from it? And I think that was the initial switch when Instagram came out with Instagram business. So get ready. To, you know, if you're not engaging in developing a solid network that's responsive, I guarantee you, by the time I hit the stage um, at Imaging USA, January 18th, I guarantee you that you're gonna you're gonna come up to me and say, Keith, you are absolutely right, because the numbers are falling off right now, and every platform is doing this. Some are easing into it, and and some is gonna be abrupt like this. So keep that in mind. Um, another article. On here that I thought was really oh um, by the way there's photos I have so I, I've curated some photos from the New York Times uh, that talks about a lot of uh, things that are going on there's a social media section down here obviously right and if you want to see tweets so maybe you're not on Twitter but you want to see the tweets and that's the usefulness of this and uh, you know I've also incorporated ads that I feel um, support our cause but um, here's another good one that you should probably check out and it is is photography the best educator and basically this article is talking about people wanting to become photographers and those folks believing that they are photographers because maybe they've taken a few good photos but the article dives in and talks about the failure of being a photographer when you first get in understanding criticism and oh there he's throwing up the bird right there um, problem solving but in a quick overview it's talking about you've got to be more than a photographer you've got to be a dedicated business person to really understand how to make it in this field so 
and, and I would have to totally agree. Now, there's some things in here I don't agree with, you know, um, but for the most part, I think this is about 99% on par. And the things I don't agree with, they're, they're just not worth talking about, you know, as a, from a photographer standpoint. So one of the ways I test these articles, is I see, and I, I check to see if it's like a single sourced opinion. Because if it is, then I got to go in and check the writer out and see, well, what is their experience? Do they have a broad level of experience? Are they referencing other things? And uh, Peter, Pix Peter Pixel does really good articles for the most part. Um, talks about one of the things I thought was interesting was the critique and I, I like this first this first line it says and once a photographer feels like they have succeeded it's time it, it, it's time to test the real world so what they do is what, what he's saying here is they people will take an article or um, they will take a photograph and post it and get popularity likes and then confuse that with the fact that they may be a good photographer when it's when in a sense it's just a popularity contest thank you thank you um so there's popularity and then there's people out there who really believe that your work is good yeah they got you got to get brought back to reality that's that's a fact and that's what i thought was the meat and gravy here um hey look being popular and making a living are two different things, you guys. It really is. So I'm going to pause here really quick and uh, see if you guys have some questions. I'm looking at the screen now. So if you have some questions or some comments you want to put up, let's talk about it briefly. And then we're going to move right on to our next segment. Any questions? I'm going to point out some resources for you so you can fact check. Hey, Joanne, what's going on? There she is right there. Joanne fam, what's up? So when you're thinking about putting yourself out there today or today, tomorrow, think about why. If you're getting a lot of likes and impressions, likes are similar to impressions. If you're getting a lot of likes or impressions, understand what that means in the grand scheme. That does not mean that you can survive as a photographer. I'm just keeping it real with you. So keep that in mind. All right, let's dive into uh, a, a couple other resources, you guys. Um, these are some really good resources, and, and Borrow Lenses is a sponsor of our conference, so I want to disclose that, but um, let me show you why. Why? Here's the deal. They got a great blog, right? Capturing fog for unique landscape photos, um, you know, great article, uh, because people typically don't shoot on foggy days. Three ways to see new gear on the Borrow Lenses site. And by the way, they have a great used site where you can buy used lenses. And, and, and it's really good equipment. They take very good care of the equipment. So they have a great blog, them and also PhotoBiz. And that's, you know, for me, there's got to be this criteria, like why? Um, even uh, when Tether Tools, another sponsor, you guys. So when you see us in the photo bays, you're going to see us using Tether Tools. This jerk stopper is actually one of my favorite. This little thing right here, this jerk stopper is one of my favorite tools. And this is a setup I use in studio right here, you guys. This is the exact setup that I use. Um, I generally have my camera sitting right here as opposed to on this crossbar. But this is the setup that I use, and I use all of these cables, and I have been for years. Um, also use a cam ranger when I'm shooting. Um, I have a platform table. I probably need to upgrade this. I got one of the old school original ones. But these are all the tools I use. And you're going to see us using those same tools in Detroit. Tether, Tether Tools is an official sponsor. And they make great product. And I hope you guys have, uh, will take advantage of that. Okay. Now, let's dive into some, some meat and gravy. Is this making sense for you guys? Is this making sense for you? All right. Throw up a Wi-Fi if this is making sense. Wi-Fi, throw up a Wi-Fi, which means yes. Wi-Fi, you can even type in Y-F-I, yes. I always want to make sure you got great resources. So here's the thing that I want to show you. You know, whatever you're doing in photography as it relates to an exposure, creating an exposure, making a photograph, you got to have a plan for it. And what's your plan? Right out the gate, your plan's definitely got to look something like this. And I'm going to take you step by step. This is really targeted at very new photographers. I call this the step by step triangle. And here's how it works. If you focus on your shutter speed, your aperture and your ISO, 
and it doesn't have to be in that particular order but if you focus on that right out the gate you're gonna be more successful in your photographs and here's a tip I'm gonna give you and this is how I teach photography you know what if you know two you can get three I want you to remember that if you know two you can get three the the bottom three shutter speed aperture and ISO are the foundation for how you create an exposure your camera and your lens means absolutely nothing your image will mean absolutely nothing if you don't master the shutter speed the aperture and the ISO and you guys are probably wondering how do photographers get out there and call themselves photographers even I've seen and you're probably thinking I've seen pro photographers who light poorly they don't really know how to explain things in photography or explain what they do I know a lot of you how many of you guys have actually experienced that you've seen a pro photographer and they didn't know what they were talking about um, they had the information all wrong how many of you guys have experienced that I want you to be honest because this is a real issue I'm gonna share something with you I'm gonna I'm actually gonna explain to you where they got their confidence from they mastered shutter speed aperture and ISO and how to see a situation and they cut themselves loose you know does that make them a pro if they don't know um, you know that pro is a misused word um, we just say that because it's it's a label and, and we just say it you know um, it, it to, to be honest with you pro doesn't mean anything it, it really doesn't you know calling yourself a professional doesn't mean anything and it definitely doesn't mean anything if you can't pull off the work so um, are you a student of the game, right? Are you a student of the game? You know, and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it real with you guys. There are a lot of people out there, even with credentials, that cannot photograph well. Maybe they're good book they're they're book students. We have that. That's that's keeping it real. So the end game, really for me, really, is can you survive at this? Can you make a living, right? I don't care about anything else. Other than the fact that, here's my question, can you make a living full-time doing this? And in my opinion, you are a professional, you are a pro, right? Um, if you're out here full-time, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold steady to this, if you are out here, or even if you're shooting part-time, I have respect for part-time shooters because they're working two jobs, and that is difficult to do, and making good money on both. So... Um, if you're not out here really making this a business and you're not out here full time, then I'm going to say you're not professional. It's more of a, an advanced hobby. So step up your game. Step up your game if that's the case. Don't be mad. It's like, Keith, that's not fair. I'm mad at you. No, I'm going to tell you to step up your game to a professional level. It, it is difficult. I will be the first one to tell you. I mean, I, I'm not immune to economic swings and bad months I have them they hurt and they're painful you guys so keep that in mind this is the foundation okay so look Keith you're probably saying how what do I do here you know where do I go I don't know what to do you know I need a I need some direction look this is re it's really simple watch this if you follow these steps you will always be successful a learn the fundamental basics of photography Learn the fundamental basics of photography. And you know what? Don just put up a very good comment. It is Photography is taxing on your body. It really is. It's very taxing on your body. I know a lot of photographers who go to chiropractors. B, you've got to find a creative energy. All that means is what, what is your style? What style are you going to emulate, deconstruct, and reconstruct? What are you going to call your own? That's what finding your creative energy is. And one of the ways I've helped photographers do that is through the creative zone. Now, if you're in the 90 PT, you know about the creative zone. Yep. That's right. Your doctor knows his business for real. Then, see, you've got to create compelling images, you guys, which will ultimately lead you to showing your work. This is, hey, this is in a nutshell. This is my visual plan my visual roadmap that I share with just about every photographer I know that's taken a class with me. This is it right here. Let me um, let me fix this in the screen, you guys. Hang on just a second. 
you, it's, we're cutting off. I'm just going to shrink this down. Hey, this is what I love about technology is when we got to work on the fly. If you got good gear, you can work on the fly. Any questions, you guys? Any questions before we move on to the next slide? You got to be different, which means you got to stand out. Got to be different. Got to stand out. All right. Any questions before we move on? Okay. Look, this is going to sound crazy, you guys. Thank you, Michelle. This is going to sound crazy because you're probably thinking you should own a camera, but I've actually had people show up to photography classes and they didn't even own a camera. This is a true story. When starting out, how do you present yourself? Um, do you say you're a pro? So that, that question that just flashed in is how do you present yourself? Is that really? Um, yeah, that's true, Amber. People, I've had, had people show up with no camera. Um, ask that question again. I'm going to pause for a second because that's a really, how, how should I present myself other than saying pro? Um, I would just say I'm a photographer. And I'm going to tell you why. It's not because there's some big difference. When you say pro photographer, professional photographer, that means you subscribe to a standard. If you go to court, the judge is going to ask you point blank. It's probably going to be a judge pro tem or a commissioner. They're going to ask you point blank. Are you a professional photographer? If you say yes, they're going to say, what standard do you subscribe to? What are you going to say? I'm going to, I'm going to reach back. We got to dig in on this one because that's a great question. You enlist expectation. So when you say you are a professional photographer, you have set yourself up for a legal can of worms. How do you guys feel about that? How do you feel about that? That's like a doctor saying, I'm, I'm a professional doctor, right? I got a license. I've got certifications to prove it. Yes. People don't think about that until they get in trouble. And then there's, when you go to court, you guys, I'm going to tell you, um, when you go to court, it is not a game. I used to work for a company back in the day, and this is how I know. I used to work for a company back in the day. We were consultants, and our owner, he was a professional witness. He would testify on the behalf of companies. I don't know if you know that, but people hire professional people to, be, uh, to testify on their behalf about something, uh, mostly in civil cases, and sometimes in criminal, too, when they need to bring in a pathologist or something like that. Well, I learned right away from working through those experiences with him um, People are going to either credit or discredit you, and they're going to ask questions to discredit you if if you are the one being sued. So you don't, you guys probably don't think about it, but it's this is a reality in photography because just because you haven't had anything happen doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. Yes, it, it is. You have to protect yourself. So how you word things is very very important do you guys want to hear you guys want to hear i'm going to you want to share i'm going to share a story with you but i'm not going to say the names i'm going to share a story with you about how people remember things um a long time ago i used to work for a transit agency and when we were in training um you go through accident procedures it's very specific there's very specific things you got to do this old timer told me, he says, they used to say, they call us young bucks back, back in the day. Young buck, if you ever get in an accident the, the, and somebody hits you, the first thing I want you to say and yell out on the, on the coach is, oh my goodness, somebody just hit us. Oh my goodness, somebody just hit us. And watch this. I was going down the hill and this truck pulled out in front of me, and I could not stop. And I want you to know, when you're operating heavy equipment with passengers, you are trained to hit whatever is in your way. You're going to try to slow that coach down, because if you jerk on those brakes and throw those people to the ground, you've got a ton of injuries, plus the injury outside the coach. Now watch this. This truck pulled out in front of me. I couldn't stop. I hit him. And I said, oh, my goodness, did you see that truck pull out in front of me? And you know what those people wrote on those witness cards? Because right away, I said, are you okay? Can you fill this card out so I'll know who's on board? 
right? We lock the doors. We don't let anybody off until the police and the fire gets there. And then we have them fill out witness cards. And then the second thing we do is make sure that they have a form of uh, uh, a paid form, a ticket, a pass, because guess what? <laughs> That's a contract. Now watch this, you guys. Watch this. When I got to my hearing, you know what they wrote on those cards? The truck pulled out in front of us. As a professional operator, you are held at a higher standard than a regular driver. Matter of fact, if you guys don't know this, if you have a professional license, you are tested at half the, the legal drinking limit. So that's the point I want to drive home. People remember what they remember those key points. Oh, I'm a professional photographer. Oh, you messed up my images. You said you were professional. We going to court. This guy told me, this girl told me she was a professional photographer. Whew. Okay. If you don't do anything, you guys, if you don't do anything, I want you to remember these five things. I want you to remember these five things, shutter speed, aperture, ISO, focal points, and white balance. These are the fundamental five. If you study these day in and day out for the next five years, I'm not, I'm not joking you because there's that much to it. If you study motion, slow motion, fast motion, um, how motion and light works together, how motion and movement works together, right? If you study aperture, depth of field, angle of view, uh, degrees of angle of view, how depth, how depth affects our eyes, um, ISO basically increases or decreases digital noise. It, is, it doesn't, has nothing to do with the sensitivity. We used to say that back in the film days, but it's about increasing or decreasing digital noise and then your white balance. If you study these five, I guarantee you will be better than 80% of the photographers out there. So look, this is better known as the exposure triangle. Remember I told you about shutter speed, aperture, and ISO, right? Um, here's a triangle. By the way, I photographed that, that image that you see in the bottom. That's Puerto Rico. Uh, retirement the retirement town for me um, I, I know I have sensitivity there but um, it controls the digital noise signal shutter speed um, you can use shutter speed for depth you know maybe you're gonna blur maybe you're gonna use depth of field I mean it, it works it, it works that way and when you know that um, you can work wonders I'm gonna show you some examples of that increased because maybe you want to see more like in this photograph at the bottom maybe you want to see more detail so you're gonna basically use a faster shutter speed or maybe you're gonna use a slower shutter speed and a bigger aperture I don't know it's up to you when you understand how to make images like this just right off the top of your head um, like oh wait a minute oh you guys my bad hold on I'm just talking away <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't got me you didn't got me all you didn't got me all riled up we got to go back i got riled up on that last part you guys um okay so let me just run you through this real quick here are the five i was talking about um shutter speed aperture iso and focal points so these are the five you need to know right five major functions there it is so if you guys want to screenshot that right um yes uh, then we have what's called the exposure triangle. The exposure triangle is very key to creating an exposure. Without understanding the exposure triangle and how it works, um, you're not going to be too successful in your photography. And if you're shooting on auto, and I'm going to be posting, if you go to podcast.keithbdixon.online, um, within the next couple of days, I'm going to be posting, uh, did I spell that? Yeah, I did. Triangle, my bad. Hey, I told you guys, it's spelling catching spelling Achilles heel um, I'm gonna be talking about using auto functions right <laughs> there it is Achilles heel baby all day um, ISO shutter speed and aperture master these you're gonna need them if you're shooting electronic light if you're shooting um, 
uh, natural light doesn't matter. This is a, a mainstay in photography. How many of you guys saw the posting with Iris? How many of you saw that posting that Iris made um, in the in the Bomb Squad community where um, she had I said, "Hey, nice mix of light." And um, I forgot who asked. Like Keith, can you explain what mix of light is? How many of you actually saw that post? Because I'm going to tell you, asking a question like that was one of the best things. Deb, you saw it? Yep. Um, that was one of the best things. Yeah. A lot of people do shoot on auto. And I got to tell you, it works, but it doesn't work over the long term. And you want to be able to, to identify how to make images like you see in the screen here, you guys. You, you want to be able to identify with that. You want to know that, you know what, I want this, the, I don't want the, the Ferris wheel blurred. I want it uh, just like I see it in that photograph. Well, how do I achieve that using the exposure triangle? You know what, I want depth of field like I see in those buildings. Um, and I want those clouds to pop out like that. Well, how do you do it? Yes, you have a lot more control. And there are times when you listen to my podcast, I'm going to give you some examples of when you should use auto because you have a, a very expensive camera that you need to work in your in your benefit. So here are some ideals about everything that I'm telling you. It's just a recap. Slow shutter speed. Um, you can get shallow depth of field with a, show, a slow shutter speed. You can get increased aperture for depth of field. Um, they work, you know, almost opposite of each other. They do work opposite, and sometimes they work together. You can use a big aperture and a fast shutter speed if it's if there's a lot of light outside. So people get confused about that. If you don't understand the fundamental, guess what? You're going to be lost because you're going to be like, well, I'm going to shoot that at I at shutter speed one over five thousand at f16 I do it all the time but when it gets dark one over 5,000 ain't working here's what I mean by blurring using your your slow shutter speed to create shallow depth as you can see there's a motorcycle cop in the photograph and if you look on the ground you'll see the lines running through because I'm, I'm basically using all the space available to bring your attention to the officer um, in the fire truck picture, I'm using increased aperture for depth of field and uh, a slow shutter speed and reflection. I call that technique stacking, panning, um, reflection, I call it technique stacking. Um, you guys, this is how, this is what the fundamentals will do. This is all fundamental. There's nothing, you know, there's no camera trickery here. All I'm doing is plugging in exposure combinations that's it all right let's run through um we got a few more minutes i got about 10 minutes so we're going to run through some slides i think you guys should know um here's how a slow shutter speed works you got to know your craft here's how a slow shutter speed works you guys um it opens and closes literally over the sensor so in figure two that's your sensor and you're just opening and closing based on time. So whatever that time is, 1 over 30, 1 over 20, uh, 1 fourth of a second, bulb, it, those are very, very slow. Uh, 30 second, uh, 1 minute, those are all, your shutter's going to look like this. And it's going to allow you to do things like this. Now this is an image I made up in Seattle. Um, for uh, a workshop that I, I used to do and it's a grueling workshop because it's a week and um, it's a personal workshop because we all sleep in the same spot um, we we work all day and we work in the cold and the rain so it's it's this is not a handheld this is not the kind of workshop that you know, a whole lot of people are going to sign up for. People that sign up for this are very serious. So um, I'm hand-holding here, and I'm standing in a spot. And as you can see, I've got panning, um, shallow depth of field, reflections. Um, I intentionally cropped that at the shoulders because I wanted to show this photo and not have any uh, release issues. Color palette, um, the whole nine yards. It took me about 10 photos to get this particular one. And so 10 failures to get one. Um, 
No, we don't call it servo in um, in in Nikon terms. That's a Canon term. Um, no, I, I have my focus locked. So I'm just on. I have the focus locked, and I'm panning, uh, single focus. So, single focus. By the way, you guys, uh, servo is uh, a Canon term. There it is. So this is all fundamental, and this is something that I teach um, when I'm out doing a workshop. Like, how do you get here? How do you get this image? Anytime you're panning, you're going to shoot a lot of images. Here's a complete opposite, and there's nothing special about this photo other than the fact that the fish is frozen, which means if you, um, oh, canines, <laughs> the not cons. Uh, if uh, All I want you to see here is I'm using a fast shutter speed, and you have to be able to look at this photo and dissect it, deconstruct it by saying, you know what, that fish is frozen. That's got to be a fast shutter speed, because if it was a slow shutter speed, the fish would be blurred. So I want you guys to think about that. I want you to think about that intensely. You got to know the difference between a slow shutter speed. This is about one over 110. So this is one over 10, one over 10, one over 20 in this neighborhood, slow shutter speed. And this is about one, three, 20 or somewhere around in there. As you can see, we have a shallow depth. So when I say use a slow, a slow shutter speed to get a shallower depth, as you can see, uh, aperture also plays into that as well. Now, here's what happens on the fast shutter speed. You guys, whole different story. The fast shutter speed only exposes a section at a time. It only exposes a section at a time. So you start at figure one closed and it exposes a section, a section, and section. When you oversync your camera, okay, we're gonna get a little te technical here. When you oversync your camera, your flash shuts off and your shutter is still open. You get this black line on your photo. We call it banding, right? You have oversynced and you get this black edge on your photo. It happens a lot. And here's the thing the more consumer grade camera you have the slower or, or the the you let me think about how to say this um typically on my camera you'll see banding at 320 but if you have a consumer grade camera you can see it at 1 over 125 if you're shooting with a pocket wizard yes there it is second curtain well you could is this making sense for you guys? If, if this is making sense, you know, like if you're rear curtain, you could. And you know what? We should probably cover those um, rear curtain, second curtain, um, exposing. Um, well, we'll talk about that. If you're brand new and you're confused right now, you're like, wow, that's a lot I didn't know. I want you to throw up an emoji right now. I don't want you to be embarrassed. If you're super brand new and you're like, Keith, this is a lot. Because we're talking about high-speed sync and we're actually um, diving off into a more technical area. Okay. Never had a problem with it, even with film. Yep. The Root, you sound, tell me your first name, The Root, because you sound like an experienced shooter. Well, photographer. I can't say, I shouldn't say shooter on here. I might get in trouble. Went through that two weeks ago, Van. So that's what it is. So I'm I'm targeting I'm targeting this information. If you're new and you're just starting out, Eric, okay. Um, if you're just starting out, I, I want you to know this because there's a lot of people in here already do. So forty, okay, there we go. See, I know I can just tell by the questions you're asking. Okay, now, um, this is wrong. the The pie part is wrong. I want to point that out, but I like this graphic, and um, you guys, I just like this graphic. I haven't changed it because it's too much work um, to go in and rechange it. Plus, it's not mine, um, but it goes from 80, 60, 40, 50. That's wrong, so I want you to point that out, but that's not what we're looking at. Matter of fact, I don't even like it for that reason. What I want you to look at is grayscale in the picture next to it because I want you to see how, as your image gets brighter, how it affects your color. You guys see that? So forget about the numbers. I want you to look at grayscale and how it affects the color in your image. As you slow down your shutter speed, you start to lose your, your color intensity. The, the solution to that is you got to go the opposite direction on your aperture. 
But you just got to know that you're going to be gaining depth of field. You're going to be gaining depth of field. You're going to be able to see more. So if you're looking for shallow depth and a slow shutter speed, you got to work something else out. Now, for all you newbies out there, I want to share this with you. This is important. I want you guys to notice. I'm going to, I'm going to blaze through this because I don't have a lot of time. Um, when you're hand-holding at 1 over 125 and a person is moving actually faster than 1 25th of a second, right? Um, I think it's great to hear. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, Eric. I really do. Um, if a person is moving faster than 1 25th of a second, they're going to blur. So if you're inside, you know, photographing a, a speaker at a lectern, and he's moving his hands. He's animated. At 125th, you could get blurring. Now, I'm going to tell you, you could pop in a flash. I, I do it all the time. I use a flash because I want my images to be crispy, right? Crispy, crisp, crisp and clean, no caffeine. You could even get it at 162. Uh, I'm not kidding you. Um, the light's low. You're going to have a lot of problems. To be honest with you, when you're in a situation like that, the best thing to do, because you're hand-holding, it's going to affect your image quality, the best thing you can do is use a flash, a monopod, and and get up on it. Yes, all day. I don't, I, matter of fact, I never shoot. I mean, the light's got to be so great, which is usually not, right? The, the light is usually bad in those situations. The up lights are bad. They're blue and green and purple and all that kind of craziness that camera enemy lights. Um, I'm using flash and I'm on a monopod, especially if I'm back, if I can't be up close. So I'm, I learned that from, I actually learned that from an old school photographer. Get up on a monopod with a telephoto and you're going to defeat the, the, the lens reciprocal rule. Number one, if you guys don't know what lens reciprocal is, you got to you got to dig in on that one. You're going to defeat that. It's going to take that out of the equation and then you can get up on it. You can slow down your shutter speed to a 30th of a second with the flash because the flash is going to freeze everything. And you're in business. But if you're hand holding and you're not using a flash, you're in trouble because you have to bump your ISO up to 2200 and all that craziness. And if God forbid they want to enlarge that speaker at the podium, you might be in a little bit of trouble. If you're not using a pro, a pro level camera that can handle a 2200 ISO, it's going to be bad. So I want you guys to know that. So this is a great graphic. This is not my graphic. I found this online. Fair game. Um, the, the Mike Turner Photography UK. There's the love right there. And um, I chose this graphic because I think it accurately represents where blurring occurs. So you need to be about 250 to be on the safe side, even inside of a building. 250. You didn't know what was happening. Yep. This is this is how it's going down right here. Now, I'm giving you guys this information because when you get to Detroit, I'm not going to have time to really get through this. So you, you got to know this coming into the game. So here's some examples. Again, this is wrong. This is the UK thing. One over 120 doesn't exist, right? Unless you guys know something I don't know. One over one fourth. This is, uh, the, I don't know. But anyway, void the bottom and look at the picture. So one is using a slow shutter speed and one is using a faster shutter speed. And as a photographer, you have to know that. You have to know the difference. What's up, Arvin? Oh, we got Arvin in the scope. What's up, my man? Arvin, website designer extraordinaire. Let me hey, let me throw. I'm gonna pause for a second. Let me throw my man Arvin some love real quick. You guys, if you're trying to create a landing page and you you really trying to own it, Arvin is the guy, right? Don't even waste your time because he's gonna show you exactly how to get to point A to point Z, right? Now it's gonna cost you some change. Quit playing, right? Because you know this is what we do. But if you're trying to create a landing page for your website, Arvin is the man. Quit playing. So there he is, right there. All right. So when you're looking at why your images are blurred, this is, you got to know this visually going into it. Ah, oh, that's a fast shutter speed and that's a slower shutter speed because I'm getting more drag with the color key. I'm getting more drag with my color. I'm going to slow it down and watch this now because this is a rookie mistake I see all the time. And if 
you know, if we can squeeze it in, I'm gonna sneak out and pull some students with me. And when we in, when we're in Detroit, I'm gonna sneak out and do some landscape photos. It'll be a free lesson. So if you, I'm gonna tweet it out. You gotta be watching me on the Twitter. Meet me outside. We're gonna do some landscape photos. And the first tip I'm gonna give you is set your aperture at about 11. Eight, somewhere around there if you got a big fancy lens you can even go 16 on it so we can get depth of field and we're gonna slow down that shutter speed bring your tripod there it is right there do not go out there and think for a second that you're gonna use a 2.8 you're outside and it's 11 o'clock at night you set your aperture for 2.8 and then basically you're using a 1 over 100 shutter speed no that's not good landscape etiquette. Can you do it? Can you use five, six? You can use that, but that's there's situations that call for that. I'm not gonna go into that. We gotta keep it, we gotta keep the approach fundamental, you guys. So look, here's I'm gonna we're almost through this. We've got a couple more slides. So look, here it is right here. You guys, you could screenshot this, get some screenshots. At one over 30th, that's the lowest possible you should be hand holding. Yeah, time lapse. We're going to do something. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to sneak out and shoot some landscape photos. So here's, if you guys screenshot at that, there it is. And then here's the faster ones. All right, there we go, you guys. Whew, that was a lot. Hey, was that free full of value or what? Now, look. Let me put a disclaimer on everything that I just told you. There are people, I have students who pay for this information, so I skipped over a lot of steps. It may not seem like it, but I did. I told you some very important things that you need to know because, you know what, I, I'd rather you know than not. Thank you. I'd rather you know than not. All right, you guys, there it is right there. Thank you, Mr. Arvin. And uh, I want you guys to, before I go, I want to take you over to this, this, uh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do something here before we go. There's a couple things that I want to share with you. And this, this is important. And you know, they say, say the best for last. Um, you know, I'm a PPA member. Thank you. You know, I'm a PPA member. A lot of you are PPA members. This is the organization we subscribe to for our standard. And, um, Here's what's important about this, you guys. Here's, here's what's important about this. We are getting ripped off as photographers, as creatives. We are getting ripped off on our copyright. And a lot of companies know, you know what? They're going to push the, they're going to push this beyond. If they're going to steal something from you, they're going to push it beyond small claims. Matter of fact, um, they're going to do it because they know that you're not going to be able to stand up in civil court. They can drag it out in lawyer fees and, Guess what? You can't even fight it because you don't have the money and lawyers cost money. This is going to close that gap. So, you know, there's a three thousand dollar ceiling and then it's got to go to civil court. Well, this is going to close that gap. And that's what PPA is working. See, there's Arvin right there. Thank you. You know what, Arvin? Thank you, man, because I, I definitely wouldn't want to be in a situation where I'm taking my cash flow and defending a case. Yes. Protect yourself at all costs. Register your images. And I'm going to give you a tip because this is what I do. I register all of my stuff as collections. So I don't have to pay a, a lot of money. And it's gotten easier to do. What was the year the earliest surviving photograph was taken? I don't know that one wrong. Tell me. So I want you guys to keep that in mind as, as you as you venture out there. Um, it's really a simple process in terms of um, understanding what it is. So PPA is creating um, or they're, they're create 1826. OK, perfect. Um, PPA is creating legislation um, right now. They're on they're lobbying right now on Capitol Hill so that um, we can get this bill passed that will close the gap between small claims and civil. Uh, and, and all that essentially means is, you know what, we got to raise the ceiling because we don't have a lot of money like companies do. So this is a grassroots action. And um, I would love for all of you guys to really get involved with it. Is that making sense? All right. 
Now, I got one more thing that I want to share with you guys. And um, this is a brand new, brand new thing. Give me a second here. Give me a second. One more thing. Now, this was a lot of work putting this together, especially with my lifestyle, you guys, and it still is. No, PPA is not for pros only. You should you should sign up for it um, just to get the benefits. You don't have to be a pro. And and Deb, I don't want you to I don't want you to be hung up on that whole pro thing. You're gonna be a pro. You're gonna be a professional. That's what I want you to know. You will be professional. Think like a pro. Be a pro. Okay, you guys. Here it is, right here. This is the Keith B. Dixon Photography Zone podcast, and um, it's, this is, I think it's been up about three weeks officially, and um, what I'll do in morning motivation, I'll cut it down to eight minutes, I call it the daily eight, and uh, you can go in here and listen to it. I know a lot of you guys, you know, can't be on always at eight o'clock and 7.30, so there it is, and I'm also going to be recording other um, podcasts, it's on iTunes as well. So you can find me on iTunes, and uh, I think podcast is the way of the future. It's a lot more convenient. So I'm going to be posting, uh, matter of fact, one, I'm working on a couple podcasts right now. One is called The Low-Hanging Fruit. Low-Hanging Fruit. So I'm going to be talking about low-hanging fruit and, you know, why. If you're going to do, if you're going to go after low-hanging fruit in terms of revenue, how you should approach it. Um, why you should approach it, why you shouldn't approach it, you know, the the stigma attached to it. I'm going to be talking about things like that on these podcasts, and some of them will be long, some of them will be short, you guys, but here it is right here. Um, I'm also creating a premium section, so, um, and it's fair, it's not, it's like $4.99 a month, or, or what is it, uh, Five thirty a month, $5.30 a month for premium content, and that's where I dig in. Um, it's almost like the PT, you know, I got, I have the PT 90. Well, I've got the PT 30, right? It's going to be on here and, uh, you can access the F stop it now daily from here as well. Just right on. You don't even have to leave the page. So there's my, my digital daily right there on the page. So if you want to see what's going on, or if I reference something, um, on the podcast, you can click it right there and then there's all of me. And then you guys, here's something that I'm working on. Um, that didn't work. I'm glad I clicked on that. Um, I'm, I actually have an urban landscape page, so it's gonna be urban landscape photography and I'm working on that right now. So, and then there's also, you guys, I haven't, I haven't hooked up these links yet. Obviously, um, I'm doing a dual broadcast right now on YouTube. So this broadcast is on YouTube right now. So if you're a YouTuber, I'm right there with you. Okay. Um, thank you, Eric. I appreciate that. And I appreciate you jumping on tonight, you know, um, for sure. My name is Keith B. Dixon. I'm a commercial photographer all day, every day. I will be seeing you guys in Detroit. Definitely. Um, I'll be doing a keynote. Me and Sean will be, will be doing a keynote. And uh, we have some very special things planned for, for you guys. And um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Any questions before I dive out? Oh, there's there's my wife. Hey, what's up, baby? There's Milagros. Look at Milagros. Isn't that a beautiful name? Milagros. Yes. You see that picture? You guys see my picture there? We actually took that in Puerto Rico, too. Yeah, that was us in Puerto Rico. We were at, um, well, babe, do you remember the name of that restaurant we were at? They have what's called, they have this big pork chop called the Can Can. I can't think of the name. It always slips my mind, but it's an awesome place to eat. So that's where we took that picture. But yeah, there's there's my wife right there. Yeah. I don't remember. Yeah, the one in PR. They make this pork chop is kind of unbelievable. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with Puerto Rican food, but mafongo, that's one of my favorite things to eat is mafongo. So, all right. Thank you guys for tuning in and thank you for your time. Uh, you know, I'm going to definitely be getting on here right at 7, 7.05 Pacific Standard Time. It starts with a C. I can't remember the name. And uh, if you guys have questions, I'll, I'll, I'll hang out right now. Um, and, and take a few questions. If not, I'm going to dive up out of here. I got a lot to do still. 
My day is long, super long. And I think, let me, let me go over. I'm going to show you guys the YouTube page as well while we're sitting here so you can see it. Uh, here is the YouTube page. So if you're just tuning in, I'm in, uh, I'm in Hayward, California. Yeah, shrimp, plantains, a lot of garlic. Yep. See, I know. I know Mike's wife was going to come through for me because she knows. We know about my fungo. You know, that's that's a staple. Like, quit playing. Okay, you guys. Um, here it is right here. Here's my YouTube page. And um, this is actually one of the most popular uploads I did. I used to do webinars for Perfectly Clear um, when, they, when they first started out. And um, it's a product that I still use to this day. But here's my YouTube page. And um, there's also a live page as well, um, a live stream. So we're live streaming on YouTube as well. And there it is. All right, you guys. That's at 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Those are there it is right there. Enjoy the background, right? Okay. So let's dive into this. I'm going to run you. All right, you guys, there it is right there. Keith B. Dixon is official. I'm up out of here. Peace.